thought about it, that phrase, to give God glory, is kind of a weird phrase, isn't it? Glory, well, glory means the manifest presence of God. So we don't give him his manifest presence. But we can glorify him. We can acknowledge his glory. Perhaps that's more what that means, giving him glory, maybe is more like acknowledging his glory. I want to do that tonight. I want to acknowledge the glory of God. I want to acknowledge his presence. I think when I first started playing music for the Lord, one of my first prayers would be to that the music would demonstrate his reality, his presence. Because if we're reminded of that, then we're reminded of the fact that he can do anything. And since he loves us, that means he will do anything. He not just can do anything, he will do anything for us. And so to acknowledge that glory tonight, let's sing a little song called the Glory Song. Amen. Glory carrier. Glory. 
believe it? Do you believe it on a Friday night that that's what you are, that's who you are? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, you better believe it. There's no juice in not believing.
says that he causes it to where we're never put to shame or disappointed. So if shame comes or disappointment comes, we know it's not from him. Doesn't have anything to do with him. We either put it on ourselves or we let the devil put it on us. One or the other, but it don't come from him. You make all things work together for my Yeah. 
continue in worship. Let's get ready to receive our offering for tonight. I know holidays are coming, and I know sometimes we think, oh, well, I need to save this and I need to save that. God already knows, and he's already provided for every single need and desire that we would have. Isn't that a wonderful thought? He is Lord. Do you know what the word Lord means? It means bread provider, sustainer. And so God is our bread provider, our sustainer. He's given us seed to sow. If you need a cash giving envelope, would you raise your hand? The ushers will bring it to you for your cash giving and credit card giving. And also, if you're watching on the internet, go ahead and push donate and be a part of this. It's a wonderful thing. It's blessed to give. It's blessed to give in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for every seed you've given us. We thank you, Father, that there is power in the seed to reproduce. We thank you, Father, that there is power in the seed that leads to life. We thank you there is power in the seed because we give joyfully. It's coming from good soil, going into good soil. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Whenever you're ready, the black baskets are up here in front. Push donate, however you want to do it, but keep worshiping and worshiping God. to bless the Lord or to bless anyone really. The meaning of that word is to say something good about them or do something good for them. Bring a blessing their way. your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. I'm just reminding you that we bless him not because he's an egotist, not because he needs to hear something good about himself. We need to hear our mouths say something good about God with our ears so that it reinforces what our heart believes about it. There's something spiritual about that process. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name.
notice tonight we've given our love our blessing and he gives it back to us and then we give it back to him and he gives it back to us and we give it back to him like the ocean tide rolls in tide rolls out waves roll in waves roll out never stops so let's just do it one more time, one more wave, one more setting of the tide tonight.
to Jesus. those services where we're just giving ourselves and receiving and giving ourselves and receiving. So let's go ahead and pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that your word that is alive and full of power gets alive and full of power as it's impacting our lives. And Father, I thank you that your word really is the truth, that every word you say to us is absolute truth and absolute authority. And Father, I'm asking, I'm standing in agreement with heaven, that Holy Spirit will have his way with us in the holy name of Jesus. We worship you and thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. You know, tonight we're going to be talking about desire. And sometimes a message that will be preached is, come on, you guys, you've got to start desiring. But we're going to look at the Word of God. And the Word of God says that he already has placed desires on the inside of us. And I want us to see how God views that we are seeing him and what the desire of our heart is. And sometimes we mistake it because we start thinking, well, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Maybe I just don't have the passion I had when I first began. But I'm telling you, and this is why the word repent is a grace word. It just simply means to turn away from and to turn to him. And so all we're going to do is turn to him and let him continue to put the desire so strong in us. I, I'm sure it's the same with you. I don't want someone to be around me because they have to. I want someone to be around me because they want to. And many times we think, well, God's obligated to do this for us. He's obligated to do that. But the truth, truth is that he desires us with all that he is. He desires us. So we're going to be talking about that tonight and seeing some things and how it really already is on the inside of us. Would you run the first video, please? The human heart is a strange and unpredictable place, full of wants and desires that appear seemingly out of nowhere. Some of these desires are for good and godly things, and some are selfish and wicked. As Christians, we know what to do with all of our desires. Obey them and do whatever they tell us to do. You see, Christ lives inside us, so whatever desires we feel popping up from inside us must have been approved by Him. So whether it's stealing a car or punching someone in the face because they're annoying you, Feel free to give in to all the desires you have, because your heart knows what it needs. Sure, you may end up in trouble or in jail, and you may hurt some people and their feelings as you obey your desires. In fact, you'll probably break just about every commandment there is by giving in to your desires. But that's a small price to pay 
in order to make satisfying your desires the most important thing in your life. These have been Deep Thoughts from a Shallow Christian. Just think, somebody sits there all day long trying to think of these things and, and then puts them out there and then we buy it. Oh yeah, this will be good. Uh, I'm going to give you a definition here of desire. Desire is to have a taste for. Powerful force inside us when motivated by the Holy Spirit to leave the ordinary behind and to go forward. To take a risk for. Desire feels intense. You will see your desire even upon your enemies. A pregnant woman craves certain things. A desire is when it is to be fulfilled like that. Desire can be good or bad depending on your heart. But for us... Our desire is what we long for. It's preparing us to see God, his kingdom, our future, and why we are here. It's important to understand that the desires that are in a Christian's heart really are for us not to live in the ordinary. They really are for us to live beyond what we're seeing in the natural realm and for us to live what the Bible says. I mean, we'll read about people in the Bible that are translocated, and then we think, well, I'd like that. And the reason that desire is in there is because you didn't have that desire before you came to Jesus. I'll tell you this. Before I came to Jesus, much like many of you, I didn't think, who can I help? Who can I give my life to? Who can I help make sure that they're going the right way? How can I heal this person? I never had a thought of that. It was, what could I get? But the desires have changed because I got a brand new heart from God. And so did you. And it's a heart that's responsive to him. And we began to have the very desires of God. You'll say something so kind to somebody, and you'll think, who said that? Where did that come from? And it's because we have the same desires that God Almighty has. Now, he tells us this in Ecclesiastes, what he has placed on the inside of us in this heart. Ecclesiastes 3.11. And he, speaking of God, made everything beautiful in its time. He has also planted eternity in, the, in men's hearts and minds, a divinely implanted sense of purpose, working through the ages, which nothing under the sun but God alone can satisfy, yet so that men cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. And so in the hearts of every single human being, born again or not born again, there has been placed a desire inside us, something inside us that knows there's more than what is here and something that needs to be satisfied in our heart, and only God himself can satisfy that. So when we start having the desire, the desire that happens and it's a natural occurrence in Christians, I want more. And we're looking for the real. We're not looking for more religion or more rules or more, you know, if we do the following things. What we're looking for is we're looking for the real. We always want to experience more of God. And sometimes when I hear people talk and they say, well, I've learned if we do it this way and we go forth this way and we say the following words and then we go ahead and lift our hands this way and we do it facing this way, then God will hear us. Now, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the manifestations of the presence of God. I desire for my life to have meaning and for my life, for me to do things on this earth that will change the lives of individuals. I desire to have heaven on earth. I desire, it says, that we now hold the thoughts and intents and purposes of his heart. And I want that to be made manifest, and so do you. In Amos, and it talks about pretty much the time we're living in. In Amos chapter 8 and verse 11, it says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor thirst for water, but a famine for hearing the words of the Lord. I am telling you that we have so much gospel right now. We have never had a time like this. Any teaching that you want, you go on the Internet and find somebody teaching on it. Anything you want to know, you can find out the meaning of every word. There is no limit to the information that is there but what there is a limit to and what we are seeing is people are trying to do this with their their heads rather than their hearts and there is a famine right now for teachings that come straight from the heart of God that don't have to glorify a man that don't have to if you'll come to me then God will listen to you if I'll pray then God will hear 
God wants us to see the reality of it, but there really is a famine where you can go from place to place, from church to church without hearing the true gospel, channel to channel, website to website, without hearing the true gospel. How do I know if it's a true? Spend time listening to him, and then you know it's his voice. If you called me on the phone and, hi, Claudia, this is Wyatt, I would know that that wasn't Wyatt. Why? Because I know his voice, and I know the voice of the Father, and you know the voice of the Father, and you're not going to follow a different voice. Our desire, my beloved is mine, I am his, and that's what my desire is for. Hey, by the way, Mary, I was looking in Song of Solomon, and there was a scripture, and she said, my Lord is tall, and I thought, that's where Mary gets it. My Lord is tall. In one of the songs, she thought that one of the lines was, our God is taller. And I thought, that's not one of the lines in the song. And she said, well, he is. So I did find it in Song of Solomon. He is tall, okay? In Psalm 10, in Psalm 10 and verse 17, and this is when somebody is at their last, they're hopeless. It says, the victim's faint pulse picks up. The hearts of the hopeless pump red blood as you put your ear to their lips. This is the desire that somebody has, and this is the intensity that somebody will feel like, I need the, my next breath so much. I need to live. I need to get out of this state. I need to get out of this funk that I'm in. And it says when we realize that God is listening to us, it begins to revitalize that hope on the inside of us. You can try to do other things, and I've done that before, where I'll just concentrate on other things, but it always comes back to my desire really is for him. And you'll always come back to the place. Don't worry about it because God said, I've begun a good work in you. I will see it to completion. It's not something that you're going to have to constantly begin. Oh, I better make sure that I, I, I've got to make sure that I've read. I've got to make sure that I prayed. I've got to make sure that I've done this. God will keep reaching out and reaching out to you. And we're responding more and more to the things of God. In Psalm 20 and verse 4, may he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. It says this way in Proverbs. It says, cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. And then it says, take the plans that you have, give them to him, and he will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will, so shall your plans succeed. Did you know sometimes, and I, I'm sure you go through this, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to God, and I'll hear God say, and yes, this I'm going to give you. And I'll say, well, I just want to know, am I hearing my voice or if it's God's voice, is it you, your plan or my plan? And God always says yes. Because we are one and God will give you the desires of your heart. You have a desire to do great and mighty things. This is an interesting thing. And, and I'll just ask you this. How many of you desire to change people's lives for the good? Yeah. That's a desire that's in our heart. Where'd you get that desire? Well, I was raised that way. No, you weren't raised that way. You got that desire because that's the desire of our Father. And we're absolutely one with him. And he says, I'm going to grant you your heart's desire. In Psalm 21 and verse 2, it says, For you have given him his heart's desire and have not, re have not withheld the request of his lips. Selah, pause and think of that. I want you to think about it all the times that God has answered your prayers, that God has fulfilled the desires of your heart, no matter how impossible it seems. And I like the way it's put in the Passion Bible here, Psalm 21 and verse 2. You've given him his heart's desire. Anything and everything he asked for, you haven't withheld a thing from your betrothed one. Pause in his presence. This is how God looks at you. This is mine. She is my, he is mine, and whatever they want, I'll do it. You know, in your lives, you have somebody that you just intensely love. Whatever is within your power, you'll do for them. But what's in within God's power? Everything. And you are so favored of God. If we could know how favored we are and how much God loves us and how much his desire is for us. That's why David cried out, what is man that you are mindful of him? What is mere man that your heart is filled with him? But that's God's desire. 
And God has put his desire inside us for him. It will drive on you at times because you just want to see the things of God happen on this earth. All of us feel like right now we're on the, we're, we're right at the beginning of something that something is about to happen incredibly in the realm of the spirit that we all know this and we feel that anticipation and you could try to talk yourself out of it, but you're a prisoner of hope. You try to tell, talk yourself, oh, well, it hasn't happened in the past. But something keeps stirring up on the inside of us. In Psalm 38 and verse 9, he says, Lord, all my desire is before you. My sign is not hidden from you. Every desire that I have, Father, here it is. And compared to the desire of things that I want in this world, compared to him, it's nothing compared to him. But God still takes care of everything Every little thing as well. In Psalm 103 and verse 5, this is God, who satisfies your mouth, your necessity and desire per, at your personal age and situation with good. So your youth is renewed like the eagles, strong, overcoming, and soaring. God says this is the desire. At your particular place in life, whatever the desire is that you have, the need that you have, he says, I'm going to pump it in. I'm going to make sure that you're strong. I'm going to make sure that you're above it. I'm going to make sure. And this is God speaking to us. I satisfy you with good. This is God. In the Passion Bible, it says in Psalm 103 and verse 5, you satisfy my every desire with good things. You've supercharged my life so that I soar again like a flying eagle in the sky. Maybe it's been a real tough time that you've been going through. And, you know, it's really, when you're going through a hard time, it not only affects you like, oh, I feel depressed, it affects you physically. And God says, I'm going to give you the desires of your heart, and I'm going to give you all the supercharged energy that you need. You're not going to stay in a bad place. Remember, we go through suffering. We don't stay in suffering. We go through suffering. We don't stay in trials. We go through trials, and we come out on the other side far better, according to God. In Psalm 118 and verse 7, he says, The Lord is on my side and takes my part. He's among those who help me. Therefore, I shall see my desire upon those who hate me. Now, I want to talk to you about that for just a minute. There are people that will stand against us. They just, they don't even know why. They just become like, uh, they just want to see you fail. And my desire is not, I want to see them fail instead. My desire is, I want them to turn around and to see God in me. And to see something that they really love and really like. And I cannot tell you how many, how many of you that were my enemies are now my friends. No, none of you. But I'm saying there are so many people in my life that have been against, against, against. And now I've turned around and are four. Especially, think about this. You guys go to Glory Bound. And this is a letter that I commonly get. Dear Claudia, I used to think Glory Bound was so weird. But now I've come to realize that we just needed to go further in the things of God. Okay. So you go here and so you'll be persecuted with that. But God says, I'm going to give you your desire. Because God says, I'll even make your enemies to be at peace with you. Okay. Now. We have other enemies besides people. I'm talking about enemies of cancer, enemies of sickness, enemies of depression, the enemies that we have. And God says, you're going to see your desire that they don't conquer you, you conquer them. Psalm 118 and verse 7 in the Passion. For you stand beside me as my hero who rescues me. I've seen with my own eyes the defeat of my enemies. I've triumphed over them all. You know what I've triumphed over? MS. Do you know what I've triumphed over? Glaucoma. Do you know what I've triumphed over? Blindness. Do you know what I've triumphed over? Every uh, a vascular necrosis. I could go on and on of the things that were standing against me and seemed to be in me, but God has given me victory over it. God will give every one of us victory. Psalm 112 and verse 8. His heart is established and steady. He will not be afraid while he waits to see his desire established upon his adversaries. It says in the Passion Bible, steady and strong, 
they will not be afraid, but will calmly face their every foe until they go down in defeat. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Take your stand and watch it have to go and watch it have to leave and watch it have to flee and watch it have no power because it's already been defeated according to God. In Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 24, it said, A wicked man's fear shall come upon him, but the desire of the uncompromisingly righteous shall be granted. In the Message Bible, the nightmares of the wicked come true. What the good people desire, they get. I want to ask you, what do you desire in your life? I mean really desire, because people will go by what they really desire. If people will say, we had, we had a women's retreat one time, and we said, what do you desire to do? And a woman said, I want to be on television ministering the gospel. And I said, wow, I am so glad you said that, because right now, and this is many, many years ago, you have a computer, and it's got a camera in it, and you can go on television right now for free. Like right now, there are many people that are watching on the website, that are watching on Facebook. At the end, you know, every week we have several, several hundred, if not more than that, that watch every service that we do here. We are on television every week, but oh my gosh, the cost, the cost of us going on TV. Do you know how much it costs us? Nothing. Pick up your telephone and go on Facebook. And preach the gospel, and it will cost you nothing. We had a friend that went on with her friend with their little laptop, and by the end of three months, it had over a million hits, and now she's known all over in her ministry. So this lady says, I want to go on TV, and I tell her how to do that, and at that time, we had a public access station. Hey, you just make a film and take it over there, and they put it on for free. Okay. And I said, I'll even help you. I'll film it for you. Never heard from her again. Because you'll say, or somebody will say, this is my desire, but you will do what your desire is. You will. And so get in touch with, what am I desiring? I'm desiring to see great and mighty things. And guess what? You will. You will, according to the word of God, you will, because your desires will be granted. It says in Psalm 107 and verse 9, For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with good. So what are you longing for? God loves. He says, I love to give my children the kingdom. God loves to answer your prayers. God loves to see that delight that will happen. You know, when you have a kid and you're going to give them something for Christmas, you don't want to give them something they don't want. Wyatt and I, it must be Wyatt's cruelty, but this is what we've always done with our daughter. We give her something that she absolutely does not want. We've done this ever since she was little. Absolutely does not want. And she'll open it and go, no. And we'll go, well, that's all we could afford. You got this at McDonald's at the toy thing. And I said, yeah. And she said, and I have four others just like that. Oh, no, you only have three. I wrapped one of yours. And, and, and I can't tell you, she's, she's now well into her 30s, and she still gets fooled with it every single year. Every single year, we get her something that she can't stand, and then we give her the real gift, okay? So that's just kind of, like I say, it must be why it's cruelty or something. Yeah. He enjoys it. I, I cry, but he seems to enjoy it. No, it's a lot of fun to give your kids, your friends, something that they really want, isn't it? And it's a lot of fun for God to give us something that we really, really want, he says that our desire, according to this, Psalm, uh, Proverbs eleven twenty three, 23, the desire of the consistently righteous brings only good. Expectation of the wicked brings wrath. In the message, Proverbs eleven twenty three, 23, the desires of good people lead straight to the best. But the wicked ambition ends in angry frustration. So God says, I like your desires. It's not like, oh, I, I've got to get God to agree with my desires. God gives you those desires. He's fun. He really is. And he likes us to have a wonderful time in our lives. He's not as religious as you thought. In the Message Bible, it says, uh, I'm sorry, in the Proverbs chapter, in the Amplified, Proverbs 13, verse 12, it says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, 
But when a desire is fulfilled, it is a tree of life. I want you to think about this for a minute. One of the translations says, when the desire is fulfilled, it brings the soul in the place that it needs to be. God says the tree of life is where we get our healing, our nutrition, where we get all the things that we need, all the things that we can partake of, the tree of life. And he says, and when you don't get your desire, it feels like I can't even take of any life. I can't even take of the good things of God. But when a desire is fulfilled, it's like a tree of life. It's like, yeah, everything is wonderful and everything is exactly as God said. Exactly. When it seems so hopeless, the desire that we have for God to change our situation, and when it changes, it feels like a tree of life. You're supposed to pause and calmly think of that. It's a tree of life. In Second Chronicles, and I love this scripture, 15 and verse 12, it said, And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their fathers, to yearn for him with all their heart's desire and with all their soul. I think that's so incredible. I want my heart's desire to be for God. Day I got born again, these words came out of my mouth. Dear Lord, I want to love you more than anyone has ever loved you. I want to love you so much you feel it in every part of your being. I just want to love you. Give me the desire to always go after and love you. And so these guys entered into a covenant, and I'm not talking a works covenant of, okay, get up tomorrow morning, and I want to see for four hours that you pray. No, there's something that you will allow God to spring it up in you. You know, if, if I kept, if today, if I got up before you, and all I kept talking about was food, and for one hour up here I just talked about every kind of food, what would happen to you guys? You'd be hungry. And you didn't come in that way necessarily. But the more you meditated on it, the more you thought about it, the more you started desiring it. And I want us to continually talk about Jesus so we can remember what our core is and that we really do desire him with all of our hearts, all of our souls. The Message Bible, Second Chronicles 15, 12. They bound themselves in a covenant to seek God, the God of their fathers, wholeheartedly, holding nothing back. How do you see God? I don't hold anything back. God, you see me. You know everything. You know every purpose. You know what I'm self-seeking. You know everything about me. But here I am, and I'm yours, and you're mine. And we began to talk to God in an open way, and we remember, oh, yeah, that's who I am. Oh, yeah, that's what I desire. Philippians 2.13 it's not in your own strength. Oh, why did they put that in there? I wanted to show you guys how strong I was. It's not in your own strength, for it's God who is all the while affectionately at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure, satisfaction, and delight. It's not even you. It's not even you that says, well, my will... The moment you got born again, you gave your will over to God. And God says, I give you the will and the desire to serve me. So God, I want that in the open. Your will in me and the desire to serve you rising up in me, I want it at the forefront. Because you're the one who gives it. I can't give it to me. You're the one who gives it to me. In the Passion Bible, Philippians 2 verse 12 my beloved ones, just like you've always listened to everything I've taught you in the past, I'm asking you to keep following my instructions as though I were there with you. Now you must continue to make this new life fully manifest as you live in holy awe of God, which brings you trembling into his presence. God will continually revitalize you, implanting within you the passion to do what pleases him. Can we believe God that he says, I'm implanting in you? to do my will, to desire me. It's implanted in me. It became me, that desire to serve him. The desire to go further in the realm of the spirit. The desire to not just be in this world the way everybody else is. There's a difference between us as children of God than everybody else. And that's that we have a father 
who loves and cares for us and that we can go all the way in him. Are you satisfied where you are? Honestly, if we stop right now, we'd say, pretty good. But that's not what God wants. God never wants it to be a stopping situation, but a pressing on situation towards more of the things of God. Have you ever heard this? When you get married, there's a honeymoon phase, and there comes the marriage. I would hate that if I were in a marriage where I thought, marriage, oh, my gosh, it's so hard. Why can't we go back to when we first started? We're so much better than when we first started. God says, my mercies are new every morning. There's things of God that we can't even come close to fathoming. So if we think we've arrived, eh, we're wrong. And God wants us to see more and more of him and stay in the honeymoon stage. Stay in the, t the stage when you, you first got born again and you wanted to tell everybody. The only way to do that is to keep rehabbing the relationship with him and going with the desires that are already there in your heart. In 2 Chronicles 17 and verse 4, But sought and yearned with all his desire for the Lord, the God of his father, and walked in his commands and not after the way of Israel. This is how Solomon had favor with God. This is how David had favor with God. This is how every man had favor with God. They just went after God. They didn't care what anybody else said. I mean, honestly, when you stand before God, and he says, I know all about you, and you knew all about me. Man, we can do that right here, right now. We don't have to wait till someday. We can go before God and just be in his presence. With Solomon in 1 Kings eleven thirty six, yet to his son, I will give one tribe, that David, my servant, will always have a light before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen to put my name. And I will take you and you shall reign according to all that your soul desires. And you shall be king over Israel. Now, what did Solomon say his soul desired? Wisdom. And God says, I'm going to give you all that your soul desires. And I'm going to add to that long life. And I'm going to add to that riches. God loves to fulfill the desires of your heart. He loves to surprise you with his wonderful, wonderful giving his wonderful gifts that he gives, so extravagant to every one of us. And honestly, if you had told me when I was 16 years old that I'd be doing what I'm doing now, I'd be like, not a chance. I am so amazed at God. I am so amazed that God has such wonderful people that can do so many things that are so talented. It's amazing. And so when you're wanting a gift, like this one guy, he said, I want to teach more than anything. And I said, okay, I'm going to let you teach on a Friday night. This is the worst decision I've ever made. It really was. I mean, the guy couldn't teach for anything. And so after the teaching, he, we went out to eat with him and his wife, and he said, now, Claudia, I want you to be honest with me. How was the teaching? I said, wow, it was long. <laughs> and he said, how was the teaching? And I said, you know, I think you're a wonderful administrator, and I think you have gifts in the realm of art, and I think you're incredible at all that. But I don't think teaching is something you should go towards. He said, but I want it with all that I am. And I said, that's weird you'd say that, because I just ran across this scripture, and I'll give it to you. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 1. Eagerly pursue and seek to acquire this love. Make it your aim, your quest. And earnestly desire and cultivate the spiritual endowments, the gifts especially that you may prophesy, interpret the divine will and inspire preaching and teaching. And I said, you know what? <laughs> if you really want to teach and you are earnest in your desire, then you can go after it and cultivate it and make it your own. It says especially that you would prophesy, and prophesying includes inspired teaching and preaching as well. And so he did this. Every day he'd say, I desire the gifts in the realm of teaching. I desire this. And I'm telling you, within a few months, that guy could out-teach anybody I knew. <laughs> so what gifts do you desire? You ever watch somebody, like you watched uh, Jeff call out phone numbers and stuff? That's cool. You ever desired that? 
You watch Shane call out. You can watch Mary. You watch uh, all the different people that are here. You watch Jane with the whole, the different giftings that you see. You watch Annie that she could do anything drum wise. You watch anybody that you look at. You watch Gary's boldness with everybody. You watch certain people, and you watch how how Patty will always narrow in on somebody, and you watch how somebody else is always an encourager. You watch how, and you think, I, I wish I could be that way. You know, sometimes I look at people and think, I wish I could be that way, but I never will be. <laughs> Earnestly desire. And then go after it and make it your own. If you see some gift that you see in somebody else that you would like, then let the desire build up. And go after it and make it your own also. No, whatever gift God gives us, God's given us every gift. You decide what you're going to major on by your desire, by your earnest desire. 1 Corinthians 14, 39. So to conclude, my brethren, this isn't the last scripture, by the way. So to conclude, my brethren, earnestly desire. Set your hearts on prophesying. I'm being inspired to preach, to teach, and to interpret God's will and purpose, and do not forbid or hinder speaking in unknown tongues. So God gives us the direction here. He says, I don't want you to forbid people from speaking in tongues. And I want you to go after prophesying. What is God's will right here and right now? Go after it and make it our own. Psalm 107 and verse 9, it says, uh, no, go to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6. I'm sorry, Matthew 5, 6. You're blessed when you work up a good appetite for God. He's food and drink, the best meal you'll ever eat. How do I work up a good appetite for God? I ponder on him. And I let his desires come forth. That's how we do it. It says in Psalm 119, verse 20, My soul is starved and hungry, ravenous, insatiable for your nutrition, your nutritioning commands, for the commands that nutrition every part of us, that give us the nutrition for every part of us. If I'm really, really not knowing what to do, let's sit down and open up the Bible and just start reading. Before I know it, I think, oh, what was bothering me before? Oh, I don't even remember. It says in Psalm 143 and verse 6, Stretch out my hands to you, as thirsty for you as a desert thirsty for rain. Let me ask you, how, how thirsty do you think the ground is in California right now? It really is. There's a longing in the land crying out for rain. And it says just like that desire is. So your desire that's been infused in you and me, that's our desire for the things of God. It says in Psalm 34 and verse 10, young lions on the prowl get hungry, but God's seekers are full of God. Psalm 42 and verse 1, as the heart pants and longs for the water brook, so I pant and long for you, O God. My inner self thirsts for God, for the living God, when shall I come and behold the face of God? In the message, it says, a white-tailed deer drinks from the creek. I want to drink God, deep draughts of God. I'm thirsty for God alive. I wonder, will I ever make it a, a, and arrive and drink in God's presence? See, that's the desire that's inside us is I just want to have all this done. I just want you. It says it this way in the Passion. Psalm 42 and verse 1, I long to drink of you, O God. Drink deeply from the streams of pleasure flowing from your presence. My longing overwhelms me for more of you. My soul thirsts and pants and longs for the living God. I want to come and see the face of God. According to this, and, and, and it, it should remind us of the scripture in Revelation, where he says, come, drink, come, eat. And God says, I will fill everything in you. You want more of God? His answer is, yeah, you can have all of me. You can have all of me. We watch people that will move in great faith. Watch people that will move in great anointings. And the only difference between them and us sometimes is the desiring it and making it theirs. Drinking in the things of God. In Peter, 1 Peter 2 and verse 2, it says, Like newborn babes, you should crave and thirst earnestly and desire the pure, unadulterated spiritual milk, that by it you may be nurtured and grow into complete salvation, 
since you've already tasted the goodness and the kindness of the Lord. And the message, it says in 1 Peter 2, 2, you've had a taste of God. Now, like infants at the breast, drink deep of God's pure kindness, and then you'll grow up mature and whole in God. He says, this is how we grow, is just keep drinking in the things of God. Don't ever get to where, well, I know what I'm supposed to do in that situation. Somebody comes up for healing. I'm supposed to first say these words. Somebody needs this, and I'm supposed to do the following prayer. Don't do that. God, what do you have that would be fresh? What do you have to say right now? What's the current relationship? Jesus said, I only say what I hear him saying, not what I've heard him saying. And he says, desire to have this. He's placed that in us. And God, let me tell you something about God. The scripture says it this way. It says, deep calls to deep. I'm going to tell you what is a good way to think about that scripture. If you were working all day outside and you hadn't had food or anything, but you've been working, you hadn't thought about it, you didn't desire, you're just working, working, you walk in the house and you smell stew. You walk in the house and you smell your favorite meal. What happens immediately? You're hungry. Because as soon as your body knows there is the possibility of fulfillment, it will create a desire. I had a friend who just said, you know, I just have no desire to get married. I just no desire at all. She found out later on in her life that God never had for her to be married, that she was supposed to just give herself to serving him, and she didn't have a desire. But if there is the fulfillment that God has, he will place a desire in you. You'll have a longing. That's why when someone comes and says, we desire to have a child and we just can't. Guess what we know about that? We know that God is going to give them a child or the desire would not be there. I need to tell you this. Why and I have, a des- have no more desire to have a child? We just thought, I just thought I'd announce that, Okay. But there are some people here that have a desire to have a child. It's because there is the fulfillment that God has for that. So God has put a desire inside us for more of him. Why? Because he wants to fulfill that. God has put a desire inside us where we don't want the fake. We want the real. Why? Because that's ours. And God has that for us. He says in Psalm 63 in verse 1, Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly, I will seek you. My inner self thirsts for you. My flesh longs and is faint for you in a dry and weary land where there no water is. I've looked upon you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because of your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. You notice it always talks about how kind God is and how loving God is. We don't go after him because we have to. But his kindness draws us. And his love draws us there's a thirst remember he has placed in the heart of every man a sense of eternity under which nothing under the sun can fulfill but god himself there's a longing inside us for god and not just to be filled once you know like if i hadn't seen you and you'd been stuck in the church somehow been locked in here for three days and then i saw you and uh, you would say you know i'm so hungry and i'd say how could that be you ate three days ago And you ate a lot. Because eating isn't just a one-time thing. And longing and being with God is not a one-time thing. He wants it all the time for us to be with him and long for him. Psalm 63, verse 1 in the Passion. O God of my life, I am lovesick for you in this weary wilderness. I thirst with the deepest longing to love you more with cravings in my heart that can't be described. Such yearning grips my soul for you, O God. I'm energized every time I enter your heavenly sanctuary to seek more of your power and drink in more of your glory. For your tender mercies mean more to me than life itself. How I love and praise you, God. That's such a wonderful way of how this is put in our hearts that we're lovesick and we have a longing for him. How many of you have a longing to see much more in the realm of the spirit? No. And I told you that you would not have a longing unless there was the fulfillment. And there's the fulfillment for us. 
Psalm 81 and verse 10, I am the Lord God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouths wide and I will fill it. God says, come on, bring your desire before me and let me fill it. Romans 8 and verse 19, for all of creation, all, nat all nature waits expectantly and longingly, earnestly for God's sons to be made known. Waits for the revealing, the disclosing of their sonship. See, we're not the only ones with desire. God's not the only one with desire. All of creation, land and people, they desire for something more than what they have. And they know that there is something there and they're desiring it because the fulfillment is you and me. It says in, verse, in Romans chapter 8 and verse 19 in the Passion Bible, it says, The entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. All of creation is calling to us. Come on! Come on, stand up to your place. In Romans 8 and verse 22, we know that the whole creation of irrational creatures has been moaning together in the pains of labor until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves too, who have and enjoy the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, a foretaste of the blissful things to come, grown inwardly as we wait the, for the redemption of our bodies from sensuality of the grave, which is which will reveal our adoption and manifestations as God's sons. We long to have the part over with that says we can't, not working. We long to be manifested as the sons of God, to be manifest, to bring to the forefront everything that we know is really ours. That's a longing and a desire in our heart. Second Chronicles 14 and verse 4, And command Judah to seek the Lord, the God of their fathers, to inquire of and for him and to crave him as a vital necessity, to obey the law and the commands. Now, get hold of this. We're to crave God as a vital necessity, as a deer that longs for the water, as a land that longs for the rain. We're to desire him as vital necessity. If I told you this, if I said, yeah, I want a car, that would be really something. But if I said, I need a kidney, one is a vital need and one is a pretty good want. And I want to tell you, God really doesn't distinguish between vital need and want, but we do. And he says, and I want you to seek him as your vital need because he is. Second Chronicles 20 and verse 3, and Jehoshaphat feared and said himself, determinedly as his vital need to seek the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast in all Judah. Psalm 14 in verse 2. And the Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of man to see if there were any who understood, who dealt wisely and sought after God, inquiring for and of him and requiring him a vital necessity. Father, we want to, we want to have you as our vital necessity necessity give us that desire stir that up on the inside of us first chronicles 22 verse 19 now set your mind and heart to inquire and require as your vital necessity the lord your god arise and build the sanctuary of the lord god the ark of the covenant of the lord the holy vessels of god may be brought in the house built in the name and renown of the lord set our minds and hearts how do i do that Let's let God do it. Let's let God stir up the desire on the inside of us. There's been some things that have crusted over the desire. Let's let God take care of that. And let's seek him as our vital need. Are you willing, because I know that you are, and I know that I am willing to let God give me continually the desires for the things of the Spirit. Just look at you. Would you have thought when you were in the world before you came to Jesus that you would spend your Friday nights at church? As a good little Catholic, I was forced to go to church. And now I desire to come to church. Before, I had to do certain prayers that were written out, say certain things that I had by memory. But now I desire to pray. And desire to contact God, and so do you. So keep going by that desire. 
let it well up inside you greater than it has before so that we can continue going from one degree to another degree to another degree. Don't settle where you're at. It's good, but keep pressing. Keep letting that desire lead and guide you. Amen? Mary. How bright the lights have become. It's like as soon as I was done, I saw the light. Amen. <laughs> Who knows whose lighter this is? <laughs> I don't know whose lighter it is. <laughs> I just realized it wasn't mine. It's okay now. <laughs> don't worry about it. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This lady right here, what's your name? Sue. Sue. Um, I saw you writing notes. And um, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Um, and, and the Lord told me, you know, Sue has a lot of notes. <laughs> and things that she has kept from the years. And the Lord wanted me to say to you that he appreciates the value you put on his word. And that you love his word. And you've applied his word to some family issues that have been heavy on your heart. And because you have blue on, the Lord was telling me that there's healing for some of those family members, physically and emotionally, in Jesus' name. You have sowed the seed through God's word to see them healed. And the Lord said, I will heal them and your heart shall be satisfied. So God really wanted to encourage you tonight because it's been a long time. It's been a while, but God has not forgotten. And you haven't forgotten either. <laughs> but watch and see what God will do, that those, um, those lives will be turned around, uh, especially a young man. especially and for himself and his children in <laughs> Jesus name amen thank you Lord praise you Jesus thank you Jesus hi um, Dean would you come here a second do you mind if Dean lays hands on you Okay, we ask permission, Jesus' name. You know what's kind of funny? I, I went to Jamaica one time. I think I have the same shirt at home. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, it, it's a nice shirt. Um, I just want to bless you today, Jesus' name. I saw, I saw your financial stuff, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I saw what you gave. And God did too. So I'm going to prophesy to you tonight that there will be a hundredfold return for what you have sowed so that you could fulfill the next step in your dream. In Jesus' name. It will come back to you one hundredfold. You'll have more than enough to do what it is in your heart. And I saw you in the kitchen. And you were preparing some things for people. And they were able to come and eat. You're preparing some things for people. First of all, they don't have much. And second of all, what you're preparing is going to bring life to them. Mm -hmm. There's souls around you for the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. It's been hard, but you have not let your joy go. And there's a quickening for your physical body tonight in the name of Jesus. Any pain leaves in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And keep raising up the younger ones because 
God is going to use them in a mighty way Amen. in the future. Yes, Lord. You're a faithful woman. I bless you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Amen. Lord, thank you. Did you have anything? Do you? Okay. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Isn't God good? Yes. Amen. He likes us. Do you mind if I take off my shoes because I'm stepping on something inside of my shoe and it really hurts. And I'm glad I don't have holes in my socks because I've had, yeah, yes. Don't be telling no secrets now, Mr. Gary. Hey, Moses had to take off his shoes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, just for that. Um, no, actually, I did have a word for you. And... Um, I just want to speak um, to your heart. The Lord told me, he said, make sure you go up to Gary and say, he's, tell him he's my son. He's confirming that sonship between you and him, okay? And he, he wants you to know, don't let circumstances cause you to feel the same things from the past. Don't let circumstances cause you to say, this doesn't work, this happened, this is how it goes. The Lord said, you're not in that time warp. <laughs> that God has broken open good things for you. And you're going to get to go forward, not backward, in Jesus' name. You're a good man, Gary. And you love Jesus, I know. I see healing coming from you. You're a healer. And that's a great part of the ministry that God has for you. And the Lord wants me to tell you, you're not going to be in a box for healing. Come out, come out. Because some of the ideas and some of the manifestations of healing that you're going to see are going to be unusual and unique and not something that's very typical. But the healing virtue of Jesus will move through you when you lay hands on sick people. And you will see them recover immediately and sometimes. Sometimes maybe it'll take a day or two but you will see them recover. So you've been kind of wanting to know what are some of the steps to take, and I felt like the Lord said for you to invest with him in healing, and, and that's a place to go from, okay? Gary, don't let the past speak to you. It's lying. Okay. Stuff that feels familiar is from the past. You haven't been yet to this place of joy and fullness that God has for you. You can go there. Okay. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. This lady in the back, do you mind if I pray for you? Okay, thank you. What's your name? Jill. Jill? Hmm. I do. When you said your name, I remembered. Okay. I want Dale to come over here. <laughs> you moved away and you came back, huh? Oh, okay. You stand next to her. We're just going to lay hands on you. I felt like uh, God was going to give you a new start. <laughs> but, but instead of you trying to make things happen, you're going to lean on him, and he's going to make the things happen. And that's going to be the change from other times, okay? There's no pattern that you have to observe in your mind to make things go forward. What you have to observe is that God loves you with his whole heart. And that's going to be what's going to send you into the reality that God has for you. 
So we cancel everything emotional and mental that has tried to keep you bound in the name of Jesus. And we speak real newness of life and healing and wholeness in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I really felt uh, um, like God was going to give you a reset button to hit and a new start. Thank you, Jesus. Do you have anything, Dale? When you walked in, you were different. You were different. You're, you're different in a better way. When I seen you, I was like, whoa, it feels different. Different in a better way. You know, you're, it's good. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. You're welcome. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to, I'm I'm trying to practice, and step out in some new things. The little bit, of, you know, I know a lot of you in this room, so, and I know most of your names, so this isn't like a really big risky thing. But what what I got tonight was, does anybody have like a a deviated septum or some kind of problem like that, where you were injured in some way and and you ha having a really hard time because it didn't heal correct? Anybody? Nobody? Okay. Well, then I'm offering it to the people who are watching that if you have a deviated septum, as a matter of fact, I think the person's name is Jeff. If you have that, God is going to heal you tonight in Jesus' name, and he's going to correct and fix and straighten what's been out of order, and you're going to be able to sleep good tonight because you're going to be able to breathe good in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, the other thing, um, we're going to be having, a, let's see, today, okay, on December the 7th, which I believe is a Friday night, we are going to be having a happy birthday Claudia party. She's turning the big 6-0. And uh, we're going to have a celebration on Friday night, and we're inviting everyone to come. We're going to have um, cake, ice cream. She won't be preaching because we're going to minister to her. So I want you to think of something that you could share about Claudia that you've known through the years or something where something she taught, something she ministered, or just a funny story, something that would be good, good to share. And so bring that with you so we could, we could bring that celebration together. If you're listening to me and you're on the Internet and you're friends, um, you can send a video of you saying something. Send it to Glory Bound. And we'll try to have those ready for Friday night too. So, and for presents, we're going to give her money. So we're, we have a money tree, and you can bring your gift and put it on the money tree. So we want to bless her financially. So you ask the Lord what you could contribute, and the tree will be here for you to give, okay? So it's Friday, December 7th at 7 o'clock. That's all I have. Jesus' birthday. birthday party? I'm going to let Lisa take care of that, but that's like what, the 19th? On the 21st of December. The December 2nd, December 2nd, which is Sunday, December 2nd. There is a Frito pie lunch being served after church, and it's to benefit the missions. So come and enjoy that. What? It's a fundraiser. Are we done? Okay. Good night. <laughs>
right now God's healing word is being sent to you to bring healing to work miracles in you I want you to open up your spirit man open wide your soul your mind your will your emotions and allow this healing word to flow even into your physical body to bring forth divine change again I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for it will be done for you by my father in heaven for where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. Right now, I want to make a miracle connection with you. Together, we'll begin to make a miracle connection with the Word of God. This divine appointment with the healing Word is creating a miracle for you, even right now, in your physical body. By faith, we take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The healing Word of God is being sent to you right now. For the Word of God is living and active in you. Sharper than any two-edged sword, it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. This healing word comes to you right now to deliver unto you the authority of God's power and his might. God has given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing at all will harm you. You have been given the authority right now to trample on disease and sickness and every infirmity and symptom of pain. The power of the enemy and his assignments of darkness have no hold on you. The curse has no hold on you. He himself bore your sins in his body on the tree so that you might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you are healed. The healing word and the healing work of Christ flow through your entire being right now. Healing fills your spirit. Healing floods your soul. Healing overflows throughout your physical body. God is bringing health and healing to you right now. He has said, I will heal my people and will let them enjoy abundant peace and security. So we come into agreement with that healing word and secure complete and total abundant peace within the realms of divine presence. I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. We speak to every mountain of sickness and disease and we command it to move right now. Move out of the body completely. We command every enemy assignment and demonic attack to be dislodged from the body. Go in Jesus' name right now. Body be free of sickness and disease. It will be done just as we have believed that it would be, for nothing is impossible with God. Neither this person or his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in their life. A testimony is being created, a miracle testimony of God's goodness and his healing virtue. For you who revere God's name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings for you and you will leap like calves released from the stall. Lift your eyes and see your healing. See healing shining on you right now. Just like spirit rays of light penetrating you, healing is filling your vision. Healing is filling your body. Healing is all you can see. 
Abraham looked and he believed. Abraham gave God all the glory. If you lack wisdom, just ask God. He gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Your faith is voice activated. New faith is being imparted even right now as the sound of this healing word comes to you. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. He sent his word and healed you and delivered you from your destructions. It's a new day. There's a new change. The curse is canceled and the blessing is secured. He forgives all your iniquities and he heals all of your diseases. For I am is the Lord who heals you. He will keep you in perfect peace as your mind is stayed on him because you trust in him. The Lord says your request has come at a favorable time. He was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement for your peace was upon him and by his stripes you are healed. Therefore, take heart and believe God that it will be just as it has been told to you. You are more than a conqueror through him who loved you. But despite all of this, overwhelming victory is yours through Christ Jesus, who loved you enough to die for you. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise you up. You do not fear bad news nor live in dread of what may happen. For you are settled in your mind that Jehovah Rapha will take care of you. That is why you are not afraid, but you can calmly face your foes. Jesus said, verily, truly, I tell you the truth. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask anything in my name, and I will do it. You are healed. Healing belongs to you. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Our faith declares the healing of God that flows in this place right now. Our faith declares the healing of God that flows in through your body, every vein, every vessel, every muscle, every organ, every part of your body being flooded with the power of life, light, 